The next item is item number six, application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, docket number 15-4746, block 145, lot 12, 125 Chambers Street in the Tribeca South Historic District, a commercial building designed by Edward J. Hurley and altered in 1967 to 68. This is an application to replace storefront infill, replace windows, reclad the facade, install canopies and light fixtures, and install rooftop mechanical equipment. This was also read into the record on May 20th and is being presented for the first time today. subject property is located at the southeast corner of West Broadway and Reed Street. As seen in uh, these historic images and photos, the building underwent many campaigns um, of alterations. The site was first occupied by a federal house, uh, as seen here, uh, that was later replaced with a four-story uh, store and loft building uh, by 1860. And then the building uh, was subsequently altered um, in the late 1960s with the removal of the upper two stories. So you see that here and here. Uh, and a glazed brick uh, with metal infill was installed and uh, this was the condition at the time of designation. So um, in 1997, the commission approved resurfacing of the facades with a beige uh, yellow uh, colored stucco uh, enlarging the openings at the ground floor, installing wooden glass doors, retractable awnings, light fixtures, and signage. So in 2009, the commission approved the demolition of this two-story building and the construction of this six-story building seen here. Uh, so now more recently, uh, last year, uh, the C of A was amended to now retain uh, the two-story building. So there are several components to this application. Uh, first, the applicant is proposing to replace the existing storefront infill at the ground floor with multi-light garage doors at West Broadway, uh, multi-light doors and windows um, at uh, Reed Street. Second is to replace uh, the windows uh, with multi-light casement windows at the second floor. To reclad uh, the stucco facade with a white glazed brick veneer and install a cornice. Um, Fourth, to install canopies and light fixtures. And then finally, to install mechanical equipment at the roof and raise the parapet. Uh, so we have uh, Lawrence Jones here to discuss his proposal. Okay, hearing open. open. Thank you. In 2010, mm -hmm. there's an approval by the LPC for a six-story building. That's yes. correct. The commission approved that. The C of A was issued. But the applicant doesn't want to do that. That is correct. The, applicant, the owner now They'll wants to retain a two-story building and, and no longer yeah. construct the <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll uh, explain why the owner chooses not to construct the larger that building. That man did site. bite the door. Okay. okay. Great. Hearing open. I opened it. No, they made the motion. Sue me. Good morning. We're going to go back to that uh, fourth. This slide again, just to go over a few things of uh, what existed on the building before. So we're going to look at what was there. We're going to look at some inspiration that we had around the neighborhood, and then we're going to move forward with our proposal and go over that very quickly. So, literally, there are three buildings that have existed on this site. Uh, there is the little snapshot. The only thing that ever existed. The first one probably existed for 50 or 60 years on this site was. Uh, a little photo bomb of this federal style house that happened in the rendering of the uh, Gerard House Hotel from the mid 1850s. That essentially, that house existed to the 1860s or so when a four story commercial building was built on the site, uh, which is very, very typical uh, of the district. And if that still existed today, we'd be talking about restoration. So by the 60s, that building was taken down. And from what we can see, for the most part, was taken down with its foundations. I know there's a lot of references to two stories being taken off and being coming afford to two. But our exploration of the existing building, and we'll, we have a larger shot later on in the, in the series here, shows a steel frame building, uh, rolled steel from the 1920s uh, onward. So it was probably, the original steel frame was probably put up in 67, 68. And then 
uh, uh, this, this two-story building was built, which is in this shot and in this shot, which was a combination of steel frame, masonry uh, facade with uh, face brick and uh, uh, glazed brick. Um, go to the next. So this is really the building that we have that we're really dealing with. Uh, when Mary Ann's had their approval, essentially, well, first of all, they, when way before in the 60s, a steel frame building was actually built on the site. Steel columns all the way up, rolled steel beams, and what happens a lot of times in New York, if you keep your foundations, you can call it an alto. So in the cellar, we found brick, and we found this sort of brick, which is probably from the 1860s, maybe. I don't know that, but it's not, it's not more recent. But the rest of the building was a new building. So that's sort of, that's the building we're going to have to deal with and which we're dealing with in this design. So next one. So we go back to the neighborhood. We go back to some inspiration of what was on the site before. This is a 1940s photograph, which you see clearly we have a full glass storefront all the way around. You can sort of see uh, some of the reflections. So it was essentially, it was a cast iron lower level, masonry up above, uh, and then in the neighborhood, even this shot from the other side of the Gerard House showed similar stuff already happening in the mid-19th century, then early 20th century in the neighborhood just north, uh, that similar sort of uh, contextual stuff was happening. So, next shot. So, our buildings ain't typical to say anything of the least for this history. And a lot of what's on West Broadway is atypical. Up above, you had the Citibank, which took over the bakery and the restaurant. We have a two-story sushi place. We have these buildings in the neighborhood. So a lot of what we had to deal with was an atypicality of our building, which was a simple two-story building. It's small. Unlike these buildings, though, we had to actually deal with the youth of the building. It's only 47 years old, really. So it's a relatively young building for this district. So we actually, as you'll see as we go forward, we have, we're dealing with the, the, the realities of, of that structure. So let's go to the next one. Uh, so we got inspiration from the area because we're in the neighborhood, we're in the context. We looked at glass canopies all around. We looked at the glass infill. And in the 19th century, we had closer structural members, uh, columns dividing. So, but between each of those columns, we had full glass components. Let's go to the next one. Uh, more or less, we were very inspired by these canopies, glass, translucent, light came through, protected the sidewalk, created a context for the neighborhood. Let's go to the next one. Uh, so this shows you a little bit of right next to where we are. So you see Reed Street, very consistent. We have this, this actually, if our building hadn't been torn down, our building would have looked something like this at the corner, except it would have had the little corner entrance. Um, Reed Street's very consistent, all glass along that. West Broadway, though, is very different. We have this building across the street. Above here, we have the Citibank facing it. We have Odeon. So it's a much more mixed bag of buildings. This is Tiny's, which we saw in the shop before. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a less consistent sort of elevation storefront all the way around along that street, which we had, which we were dealing with with our design. Let's go to the next shot. So we go back to the real building. So our first inclination is, you know, clients have a certain amount of money to spend. They want to put up, they want to, they want to build a building which is representative of what they do. So we went to look at preserving as much as we could the upper level, which was still there. So we wanted to go back to possibly going back to the old masonry facade. We did our probes and really found, we found the old uh, glazed brick we found the building brick, but the stucco, the way it was applied, really destroyed the entire facade. So that brings us to what our solutions are, which we're actually creating a veneer onto the building. Let's go to the next one. So this is back again, our shop. Uh, that's the building. These are the columns. It's 20 some feet between columns, steel, steel beams above. Let's go to the next shot. So here's what we have. This is. This is the, the elevation of, if we took, right now it's covered with scaffolding. If we took that scaffolding off, this is what we would have. We would have the four openings above, essentially just steel columns along the base with some masonry infill. 
And at this point, the stucco is removed. It's just a raw brick that's around there. Um, and then our first inclination was to go back to use the elements that we were looking at before uh, in the area to preserve as much as we could the building because we couldn't rebuild the building. So we've preserved the rhythm of those four windows at the top. We've created a strong cornice line along the very rooftop extending the uh, parapet slightly. And then we've created, between each of our columns, we've created a full, a full wall of glass, with the lower level being a knee wall, which is very typical for the district, of a solid piece. So it has a lot of the, and, and also we've divided the glass in a certain way, which kind of refers to buildings in the area. Let's go to the next one. Uh, shows it on read. Let's go to the next one. Uh, this is a sight line. This represents the cornice 10 inches that we've added. It looks like a, a, a steel cornice across the whole top. What it does is, is it masks the mechanical equipment. Our building totally covers the site. There's no other place for us to put mechanical equipment but on the roof. So that's what we did. We've raised the cornice and we've masked the height that this is taken from uh, Regardless Park Triangle across the street. Let's go to the next one. And that's just taken from the other side of that street, looking across to the trees, uh, and, and the 10 inch parapet masks our equipment. It's, it's quite a high parapet here, which was helpful for us. Let's go to the next one. Um, this is more shots of the mock up that we did. And the, the mechanical equipment is really masked in that you really don't see it as you're walking around. It's totally, it's totally not visible from the street. Let's go to the next one. Right. Next. Okay. So this is a closer view of it. This shows the other element which we've added, which we've added with uh, a canopy, which will have lights on it. We have, uh, going back to an early photograph that we saw, we had a signage that takes inspiration from that uh, some of the older signage in the neighborhood, it's not lit. There's no lit signs on the building. It's actually going to be a painted steel, which will reflect light. So we have our white glazed brick on the top. We have casement windows up above, defining the same uh, openings that are already there. We have a black and steel base, which brings that whole line together uh, with the first floor. Let's go one shot. Those doors do open up. We're going to show you a plan a little bit later, a few minutes from now, of the first floor. This is a full restaurant. This came up in our community board presentation. They're worried about having it open. They were afraid it was a bar. The bar is a very small component at the very front. It's almost all tables and chairs. It's, all, it's going to be a large dining room. That's an elevation of the door itself. We have materials with this too. When I'm done, we can pass the materials around. Let's go to the next. This shows the light fixtures. And that shows a soft light that's going to just wash the facade at night. From, from that light fixture? No. There are other lights. The, the light, light fixture, fixture, right? Up. Yeah. yeah. Very soft light. We picked out. We have a mock up the light. That's all it does. It doesn't even go to the top. It just gives a soft glow to the facade. And some more details of the fixture. It goes all the way around so that the entire facade is lit softly. This is a sign. We took this, as you'll see, that this is from a slide a few slides ago. This, though, is not neon. It's painted steel. Just a trace of paint so it actually reflects the light of the neighborhood around it. Next one. We have a corner entrance, much like the original corner entrance in the 1860 building, which you saw in the 1940 photograph. Next. Some details of the canopy. Very typical canopy. It only goes six feet out. Uh, over the doors, protecting them when they're open. Next. That's the view in the context. And uh, these are the plants. Let, let's go to the ground floor, just in case that becomes a quick. So the ground floor, as I said, the bar is very small. Most of it's dining. There will be an entrance on the far side into the hotel. The restaurant will act as the restaurant for the Commodore Hotel also. 
although it'll be a separate building, we're filing it separately, but it's it's going to be uh, the hotel will be using it as as their sort of breakfast restaurant lunch space. And here's our corner vestibule entrance, and these are the exit stairs. And let's just okay. Questions now, yeah. uh, Michael, and then uh, Marjorie. It's hard to tell from your probes, but it does suggest that the existing veneer brick is a white glazed brick. Is that correct? Uh, a good bit. We can go back. You can see the buff biscuit, yeah. but it also it, appears that there actually is it was. a white glazed brick. It's a, it was a white brick. Uh, right, thank you. Uh, you don't need to. Okay. So, That's what we were trying to preserve. Yeah. Thanks. Could you go to the rendering of the building in, in location? Thanks right. to the Commodore, so yeah. it's a door, yeah. Yeah. The rules. There, there you go. go. So when I look at this building, I see meatpacking district. How do, could you tell me about why this isn't as appropriate to this particular historic district? Well, I think that might be the size of them. Like I said, the size, the height. It's a very unusual with other other buildings along the street, which are similar in height. Uh, no, it's the buildings. treatment that you got with the garage, the garage doors, these kinds of divided lights. Like, where in the where are you? Where's your reference point in this district for that kind of treatment? Well, let's go back to our canopies. And let's go back to our. Right, these are the sort of the storefronts we're looking at, the canopies that are right around the corner on Wayne Street, North Moore Street. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually quite a few within the whole district. Okay, that's canopies. Okay. And then the divided lights? Uh, divided light, I'm not sure if we have a specific photograph of that. Um, you know, our original, photo, our original storefronts were all full glass. Right. That's why I'm, I'm needing help here um, to get me into the meat packing in Tribeca. Yeah, what is that? Well, that's another photo of all right. these, 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 Both these buildings got stuck in this rendering of the hotel, so we're not sure of the authenticity yeah. of either of those. But this actually later on appears in similar photographs from the 20s. It's hard to see in this photograph that we've captured that are right up the street from it. Mm -hmm. You had it in one of your canopy shots too. There was a there was a divided light similar to that of right. the canopy. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then can you talk about the facade material, the glazed sure. brick veneer? That's great. Uh, we'll, we'll yeah. pass the material around for uh, everyone to take a look at. Right, our inspiration initially was the original facade that was on there from the sixties. And there are really two ways to go with the veneer. One is to go with a stucco veneer and our clients, and we designers felt we wanted some authenticity to it. So we wanted a real material. We just didn't want to do mm -hmm. another sort of dry bit stucco facade. We had quite a few of them in the district. Mm -hmm. We felt to go to a real material would harken back more to the, the feeling of the neighborhood in the district. Than just so is it a brick? It's not a piece of It's a veneer. It's just a veneer. Yeah, but it's a real place. It's a real product. It's a real. It's not just a foam. It's not. It's not thing. garden. It's, it's, brick, it's a thin brick applied to a brick inset, or it's, it's a real brick laid out. It's a applied to a brick inset. Mm -hmm. And this is for the canopy. We can't project more off of the right. building, mm -hmm. so we're limited by we're limited by our our code, and that's for the canopy. And that's for the Your canopy. Option would be removing the existing veneer brick to come back with a a new brick. Right, and, okay. and what our probes uh, really discovered is the we're essentially taking the building down. Our, mm -hmm. our elevation would essentially show steel frame and nothing else at that point. Mm -hmm. So then again, how do you see the glazed brick, the white glazed brick relating to the district? Well, along West Broadway, it relates quite well. It's a very, it's a very interesting kind of row of buildings. I mean, our building is, is really from 1967. Right. And we actually had glazed brick that was covered by Marianne's when they did the stucco. So there was originally a glazed brick facade on top of it. 
So your reference is essentially the building itself, not not the neighborhood, because right. the neighborhood doesn't have the brick. Right. right. I mean, the, the difficult thing of doing a, a sort of a new building in a, in a historical district is getting the feel for the district somehow. Uh, obviously, I'm, we thought we got the feel for the wrong district, but <laughs> we were aiming for this district, which we, you know, which our clients are very anxious to be a part of. Uh -huh. So. Yeah, so there's a little bit of a mix of being influenced by the building itself and its own recent history and what was there before. For example, it has a corner entrance into the original 1860 building had. Uh, it's all glazed at the base like the original 1860 building had. So mm -hmm. there's components of it that we're bringing that were Which at the site originally. The and then there were, uh, so there's some elements from the district and some elements from the original building. So it's the obvious element of the original of what's there, it's we're not adding anything to the building, and we're keeping the masonry open. It's so difficult to rebuild. We would have to rebuild the building the way it was built to take that masonry down. So we're sort of left with the proportions that we have, with that rhythm of those windows around. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, I think along West Broadway, considering kind of the menagerie of styles and buildings from this park up. The next two blocks to the Odeon, it's sort of more of a calming effect that we're feeling, that we're creating. We're not trying to create anything jarring. We're really trying to, it's a little of this, a little of that, it's a little of what the building was before, and it's a little bit of the elements of the district which have inspired us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes. Restore, we've got doing work on the building that looked like the building. <laughs> right, but I'm just saying it somehow doesn't seem like it was in this district before. I agree with the other comments. It was like a combination of the doors. Because the, the references, when we write all the historical references. No, no, you went through the references, but it doesn't seem like. No, but the references of the building was taken down to two stories and then sent to the building. Right, the right, it was no, demoed, yeah. I understand. Well, I just, mm -hmm. don't think it, like Super Linda, okay. which is a no, no, Como. Not, it doesn't seem like something you would expect there, obviously. Maybe that's thing. Well, we were kind of the original, the taller building that was approved there actually had a full glass facade in the case, which we were kind of surprised at. It was totally glazed mm -hmm. in sheets of glass, which Whoever we, did, we felt that was too jarring. We wanted to sort of go back and create something that felt okay. more grounded in the district as okay. the material that might have been there. Okay, we'll go to testimony, come back to you in a moment. Thank Barbara, you. Zay. Barbara Zay of the Historic Districts Council. HDC supports this application, finding the changes to be significant improvements to the existing structure. In particular, we appreciate the use of white glazed brick, a high quality material for the recladding of the facade. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, I guess it's no surprise the community board where are you? There. I'm sorry. Yes. No, no, stay, stay. Uh, recommends that rejection of the application. Um, they don't like the noise. They admit that that's they don't like um, not relevant, but um, directly relevant to, the, to this um, application. But let's see, no context, entirely too much glass along the street level, the amount of retractable facade glass overwhelming, uh, no issue with the glazed brick upper level cornice or awning. Um, but don't like the glass and, don't, and uh, re recommends that we reject the application. Okay, anything further to add based on the testimony or anything else you want to say now? Well, I, you know, we so up in the front, in please. The landmarks, yeah. Uh, committee, committee. Yeah. It the committee yeah. We did have actually pushback in the presentation. The comment was from one of the members. Of I'm not approving one more restaurant or bar in this neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> we know. Okay. So the chairman of the committee said that's not our role here, but he rejected it. That Got point. it. But the Landmarks Committee approved it, actually. Um, the community. Which is not entirely clear from what they sent me. See what, see what, sorry, Jenny. Because that's a full board voting for. Full board voted reject. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. 
we'll get, we'll, we, we, we understand the full context. Okay, discussion. Fred, please. Thank you. Well, very interesting testimony, how to make of it. But um, 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 what I make of it is this. Um, this, this uh, street, uh, West Broadway, is a really a polyglot of many things, uh, has been. This site, this building, uh, has a history of uh, significant change over time. F for me, at least, um, I don't think our role is always to, um, you know, investigate every little detail that exists within the district and then glom them all into a building that becomes, um, you know, perhaps a camel of all of those parts. Um, I rather like to see something that's different. Uh, this is legitimate because it's there. Uh, is, it, is it lovely? Is it right? I don't know exactly, but it's, it's there. Um, uh, the fact that it's not being um, uh, the full building that's approved by this commission is astounding. Um, I can't remember a time when somebody has, has an approval for a six-story building and comes back and says, well, we're just going to keep the two-story. Um, I don't think that's good or bad. It's just unusual. Um, uh, anyway, um, so, you know, the, 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 so, so it's a huge improvement on what's there, obviously, in all ways, proportionally. Uh, you don't need to look, in my judgment, you don't need to look and see if there are multi-pane windows all over the place to say that these should be multi-pane windows. This is a building like nothing else, so it needs to be consistent within itself. Um, and to me it is. Um, uh, to me it is. Um, the white glazed brick, I think we all know, is a uh, um, perhaps a, a fatally flawed building material because the, the, the cracking of the glaze then permits water to get behind it and the freeze-thaw cycle works its magic and then you'll be replacing the white glazed brick, maybe not too long. Um, I'm not sure exactly if we should reject it for that reason, but I think it's, an, it's, a, it's a statement of fact that I think most people know. It may be a reason to reject it. But if it is rejected by further testimony or further comments around this table, I would suggest that some other material that still replicates the whiteness of uh, another material could still be appropriate. Um, uh, adding a, a little bit to the top of the cornice, I think, is a, is a good thing to do. It hides the uh, substantial mechanical equipment, which would be on that roof and quite visible if it weren't there. Seems to me to be a good thing. And it actually adds a little banding at the top of this little building that actually helps it. Um, the canopy is, is okay. I think you've shown that there are other canopies around. It makes sense. Um, that's enough. Michael Devonshire. Uh, if, if we could just be totally clear about this, it's not now going to be white glazed brick. It's going to be white glazed tile, right? In order to install white glazed brick on this building, and the problem with, with white glazed brick in New York City is mostly a problem with application, not the, the brick itself, the faulty installation. That said, I, I, I have some questions about the performance of this material, but I think it is completely appropriate, given, given the parameters that you've been given, and and uh, again, to sort of to go further to what Fred has said, I think when, when the full understanding of the insanity of the real estate move <laughs> occurs and this goes away in 30 years, it'll be long before this stuff has fallen apart. So I don't, <laughs> I don't have an issue with this at all. I, I, I actually, um, I'm very much in favor of this design. I'm, I'm, it, it is a, a mild departure from this district, but then again, everything that's happened in this district since the 1960s has been a mild departure, and I think this is completely appropriate. Um, I think that I, I agree with what's, what's been said generally. I think the building itself is an anomalous building for the district, and therefore one does not need to make it anomalous. 
Um, that's a word. Um, I think that, that the, it, it kind of strikes me as very anachronistic in, a, uh, in an 80s kind of way, the, the gridded aluminum mullions. Uh, gosh, I thought we were over that. But, um, uh, you know, I think, I think from, a po from the point of view of landmarks approvability and appropriateness, the building being an outlier can, it can uh, I think it's appropriate that it, it perpetuate its outlier status. I, I, I would say that the, uh, the quality of the materials is not, not super, but I agree with Michael that they won't, that they won't last, uh, they won't last uh, too short a time. Um, I don't know, I mean, I guess I find it a bit of a hodgepodge, but it's an appropriate, it reminds me of the Smith restaurants, you know? It's like they're all, they all have that kind of faux New York-y, subway tile-y, gridded steel-y kind of feel, but I don't know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, I understand the anomalous aspect of the building. Yes, I agree that it's an oddity. And, but what's funny is sometimes we see, or often these days, I'm happy to report, we see anomalous structures appearing in our districts, and the architecture sometimes blows you away, right? And so I guess we'd like to, I, I was hoping that this was the opportunity to blow us away. And instead, this reminds me both of those restaurant chains that are often, um, often um, Belgian, like Belgian-y, uh, and then uh, meatpacking stuff, and then 7th Avenue. There's like that whole thing, like the gourmet garage, you know? restaurant called Cafeteria on 7th Avenue. There you go. So basically what I'm seeing is more of a building that represents a branding of a typology of restaurant, and I'm not actually seeing a building that's responsive to the district particularly, but here you are with this anomalous thing. I, you know, <laughs> it, it's sort of like it's okay, but it's really not rising. Okay, but I, I think it's um, appropriate and um, does no harm, essentially. And uh, therefore, I'll close this hearing. Motion second, Michael. A resounding approval. Um, okay, 125 Chamber Street, also known as 95 to 99 West Broadway, 101 to 107 West Broadway, and 113 Reed Street in the Tribeca South Historic District. Hold it. I recommend approval, finding that the uh, removing of the existing store stucco and storefront infill will not eliminate any historic material, that the blackened stainless steel cladding installed at the piers and above the ground floor openings will be harmonious with cast iron storefronts and buildings in the district, that the multi-light configuration material and finish of the proposed black finished doors at the ground floor and windows at the second floor will help unify the fenestration pattern on the building that the solid panels at the lower portion of the doors will be harmonious with traditional storefronts with paneled bulkheads found on West Broadway and Reed Street, that as a two-story building, its facades have been altered with enlarged openings at the ground floor, and that the building was refaced in brick and subsequently stucco, and therefore the proposed facade alterations will continue the evolving character of this building throughout its history. 
that because West Broadway is the most varied street in the historic district, with buildings of different sizes and building types, representing the various phases of the area's development, the presence of garage doors, while not typical in the district, will not disrupt a unified streetscape that the non-illuminated metal signage will be well scaled, that the storefront openings will be in keeping with traditional types of signage in the district, that the housing of the proposed LED concealed lighting will match the materials of the proposed storefront and fill, that the simple cornice will provide an adequate termination of the facades, that raising the parapet walls will not result in the loss of damage, loss or damage to significant historical or architectural features of the building, and that the raised parapet walls will help conceal the proposed mechanical equipment at the roof. Um, regarding the metal canopies, the building has been altered extensively over time. The canopies will be in keeping with the proposed alterations of the building and will introduce a market character that, while not authentic to this facade, recalls the commercial history of the Tribeca South Historic District. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's, uh, it's approved. Thank you. Thank you.